Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Um, I'm not going to be long because I'm leaving the gym and I'm about to unwind a little bit. Um, stop by the cigar shop. <clears throat> Chop it up with the fellas. Speaking of the fellas, I got something I really want to get off my chest. Uh, like I said, it shouldn't be too long. Don't forget, we're in the middle of a fundraiser. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, go to the description box and click, click on the link and support the work that I'm doing. If you don't want to click the link, you can give by way of the organization's cash app account. That information is also in the box. Here's what I want to talk about. And I am speaking from an unapologetic position. I'm not here to negotiate. I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to talk about it. I'm calling on a return to a time when men checked other men for doing unmanly. And, and I don't mean in the sense of femininity, but obviously you call your boys on the man code violations. I'm talking about something more seriously. I'm talking about men looking at another man doing something that doesn't represent manhood well. Hitting on your woman or any woman for that matter. Not taking care of your kids. Uh, being verbally abusive to women. Uh, cutting other brothers down. Talking behind their back. All that stuff that doesn't need to be done. We need to return to that man code, that code where brothers held each other accountable, where brothers sit up and said, I know you're going through a rough time, but do this. Brothers that'll sit up and say, man, I know you caught her doing that, but don't do that. Brothers that'll sit up and say, hey, it, 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 it might feel good now, but it's going to hurt a whole lot more later if you do that. Hey, how do you think that's going to play out? A, a year from now, two years from now, do you really want to do that? Hey, let's sit down and talk about it before you do that. Hey, man, you know you're better than that. I'm talking about looking at cats. And, and, and so that I'm clear, because somebody chimed in when I posted this uh, yesterday. Somebody chimed in, uh, you know, talking about how, how these young cats are and, you know, you fool around and get shot. I'm not talking about directly going to somebody you don't know you see doing something. If you got that kind of feeling and move, there are men who can do that. I'm the kind of person that I catch a cat and I talk to him. But I'm going to talk to him in a way where he knows where I'm coming. I'm coming from love. And he won't even understand why I lo there's love there. He won't understand that, but he'll know that I'm not coming from a place. But I'm calling him because there's something deeper in him. If you know how to speak to the deeper person, the better person in somebody, you can, you can talk to anybody. Trust me, you can. But I'm not talking. I'm talking about some of you cats that's sitting there in your boy's file. I mean, straight trash and you rolling with them and you don't realize the trash getting off you and you dropping your standards. Association brings about assimilation. You hang around someone long enough, either you rubbing off on them and they rubbing off on you or y'all balancing each other out. But at any situation, it's no way that you hold a high standard and you don't hold the people around you to that standard. Dr. King said something that, you know, there's a lot I disagree with with Dr. King's early movement and his early positions and the way he moved. But I absolutely am all in on the way he self-corrected. He may have even overcorrected, but he, he realized what was going on. He went all in knowing that it was probably going to cost him his life. If you read his memoirs, it's very clear. But that's something he says that I 100% agree with. So the man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. So you got to ask yourself. What are you willing to die for? Now, see, I can look back in my life, in my early, my, my, my teens and my early 20s, that was a bunch of stupid stuff I was willing to die over. So what that did is when I transitioned and started to mature emotionally, started to mature mentally, started to mature in the things that I wanted to be and become and thinking about my legacy, I had to find something I was willing to die for. I'm willing to die for my family. I'm willing to die for my name. I'm willing to die to protect anything that I'm responsible for covering. It ain't even a second thought. And anybody that knows me and know where I come from and know my past, know I, 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 I don't have a problem with putting my life on the line for what I believe in. It's just that I've changed the things that I believe in. What am I saying? I'm saying there's got to be a point in time where we, we stand up. It's good to talk that shit. I don't just talk it. I'm out there living it.
Things can be said about me because I'm not perfect. Nobody's gonna ever say they felt unsafe in my presence. If they are, they're lying and, and the people around them know they're lying. Because I tell you one thing, the old me is not dead, it's dormant and it can be awakened. So I'm not that person that took pride or takes pride in being the old me. But the old me is what got me to the new me. And the new me just thinks a lot more. The new me looks for better solutions that keeps me here longer. But the new me is not gonna sit around and just watch things fall apart and sit back and say, it's not my business. That's the problem. Nobody is willing to stand up. Everybody's afraid to make somebody else uncomfortable. If I can't call you on your BS, we can't be boys. We can't be tight because you are a part of what I'm trying to do. You're in my space just as much as I'm in yours. There's nobody I look at that I hold in such a regard that I'm gonna sit there and let them do something I don't agree with and not speak on. I'm too much of a man to do that. We don't have to agree, but you're gonna understand where I'm coming from. And if we that far apart, we ain't gonna be tight long. I'm headed somewhere and the people that I'm, that I'm rolling with gotta think like me. We ain't gotta agree on everything. Me and Dr. Blanchard been riding for years. We don't agree on everything, trust me. But we respect each other and there are lines we don't cross. That's the thing that I'm calling black men to stand up on. Start checking your boys. Start calling them on some. Hey man, when the last time you went and picked up the kids? Hey man, when, you know, you getting it. That's, I know. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I absolutely loathe the child support system in this country. Not because I don't think black man or any man should have to take care of responsibility. I'm an absolute believer that what you create, you're responsible for sustaining. I teach that. That's a part of manhood. Matter of fact, the ancient word for father is Abba, which means sustainer. So I have no problem with, with men being, but I think that men should automatically want to do it. I think child support should, should, support should be for men who have proven that if you don't hold them to the flame, they're not going to do it. I don't think that's the automatic go-to. I don't, because that immediately puts a leveraged arm in one person's hand and conflict in, 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 in a bunch of other stuff that needs to be worked out if we're going to raise kids together. If you got to be dragged down to turn in money, that's a problem. If you got to be dragged to come pick up your kids, that's a problem. But ladies, if he's paying you and he's uh, you, you agree with the amount and he's giving it to you, he's coming to get the kids, lead them people where they at so that you can both work together and raise your children because they will keep you going at each other and they will use that to further their political careers and they will destroy your family, destroy relationships between fathers and uh, children and a bunch of other things. Again, I'm not talking about y'all women that got them guys that you, they on child support, you still ain't getting money. Because they have mastered how to dodge them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the people that you know it. You know, you know it. You know, those of you know that man that's going to take care of his responsibilities. That if he's got it, you got it. That person right there, work with that person. Be with that person. Y'all figure out why y'all didn't work, but y'all got a co-parent. And, and, and I, I hate that term. Co-parent means we got together, created something, and we're going to do something that we want to do for ourselves, and we're going to sit up and figure out a way to do something for the kid while we're at it. I think we need to stop uh, procreating so casually. I think we need to be real, real solidified in our relationships, and I think we need to consider how far we're willing to go in relationships. I'm not asking anybody to be abused. Be abused. I'm not asking anybody to be cheated on. I'm not asking anybody to be neglected. What I am saying is this is a perfect world. Two adults are not going to be on the same page every day. Two adults are going to have times they're looking at each other and they really can't stand each other. That's the reality of you. ain't going to spend every day of your life with somebody and y'all just, oh my God, that's bull crap. Them romance novels got y'all messed up. How hard are you willing to work on it before you start it? You need to know how hard you're willing to work on it. You need to know what the deal breakers are. If you say this is the deal breaker and there's nothing that happens in that way, then it's not a deal breaker. Figure it out. 
Your kids need you to. One of the adverse childhood experiences in life that puts a kid on, on, on the fast track to an unhealthy life and trouble is parents breaking up. That's one. There are a bunch of others. If you get at least four of those, you got all kinds of problems. You're more likely to commit suicide. You're more likely to have health issues like ischemic heart disease, type 2 diabetes, uh, autoimmune issues like lupus and a bunch of other stuff just by the experiences you have a child. We need, really need to wake up. We so self-centered. Everybody is a man event. Hey, man, ain't got nothing to do with me. And it's falling apart all around you. Why? other races people don't even like each other and they working together and everybody agrees go capitalize off them they so darn gonna screw it up and and divide it that you can get uh, you get them and then turn around and turn them on each other while you're doing it hey fellas i'm not jumping on you i love you i'm one of you i want to see us raise the standard of how we carry ourselves that ain't about this ain't about the women how we treat the women is a part of it. This is about us. So that's something inside of me that governs how I've handled every situation, including the situation with my wife. You know, she decided she was ready to move on. I respect that. I have not mishandled her. I've not talked to her crazy. I will not talk to her crazy. I will not mishandle her. That ain't got nothing to do with her. She's exercising her right. That's got something to do with me. To me, you don't say you love somebody and because things go a certain way, you start attacking. Just not the way I'm built. Not the way I'm gonna be. Not the way I'm gonna ever be, but I tell you what, I'm calling all of us. I'm not on a pedestal somewhere. I'm not this perfect guy. I don't have all the answers. There are a bunch of things I'm working on with me, but I wanna, I wanna stand it. I want, I'm calling and I'm calling me out at the same time. I want a standard. I want a standard that represents that we actually mean what we say when we say we want an empowered nation. How are we going to empower when we're not holding ourselves to a standard strong enough to do the things we need to do? That's real. That's real. Thank God I've got men in my corner that are sitting up, you know, tugging on my coattail. Hey, hold your head up. Hey, whatever you're thinking, don't even do it. What the fuck was you thinking? I mean, excuse me, excuse my friend. You know, as they do, what were you thinking when you did that shit? You gotta, if you ain't got nobody in your corner that's gonna do that, you, you headed for a crash. You probably crashing all the time and don't even know it because you got a bunch of yes men crashing with you. I'm constantly looking for men that I actually admire. You know why? Just their presence holds me to a standard. We, we, we got work to do. We have work to do. I wasn't even meaning for it to go this long, but I tell you what, I'm gonna get off of here. But we need to return to a place where we are holding one another accountable. That is absolutely my call, my challenge right now. It's time to line up. I'm out.